The Internet Caucus, uh, sponsored by the Internet Caucus Advisory Committee, 200 more strong organizations who have uh, worked with members of the caucus and with all of you to educate members of Congress and to educate their staffs, educate the public about the, the Internet, its architecture, and how we can try and resolve policy issues uh, in a way that, that serves an open, global, decentralized, and vibrant and growing Internet. Uh, that's our mission. Uh, as you know, can see from our materials, our, our, which we're handing out at the door, we have our traditional yearly program. We have several forums covering a wide range of issues from uh, voice over Internet protocol to digital security uh, uh, and uh, Internet taxation, a whole range of issues that uh, will be confronting us, we plan to hold forums on. We have an international dialogue with the European Commission. Uh, we have a put out a do a educational event uh, on the Hill, a teach-in this year. Last year we did uh, children's tools uh, to protect them from uh, unwarranted content. This year we're going to look at spyware. It's a wide-ranging program, and I and you and you know it, and you're familiar with it. I want to get uh, to the important part, which is to really introduce the people and the members of Congress who make the Internet Caucus possible, the leaders and founders. I want to call first on Senator Conrad Burns uh, from the state of Montana, who's the chair of the caucus on the Senate side, well, and well, Senator well, Pat well, Leahy. Well, All right. Jerry, thank you very much, and thanks everybody for coming. This is, uh, Pat and I was just told me, he mentioned, he said he used to go to caucuses before, and he said I got tired of them because the same five people kept showing up <laughs> every time. And I said, that's not the case with this one. And, and I, I will tell you, uh, Senator Leahy and and uh, and the con Congressman Boucher's here. I don't know if good lad showed up yet. I, he probably not, but uh, these folks, uh, these, it's, been a, it's been a labor for all of us, and, and they've done a, a terrific job of, of keeping this uh, this caucus going, and you're going to hear from them. Um, I just want to introduce some folks that are here, very special folks that that uh, really keeps us going. I don't think any of the FCC commissioners are here yet. They're still having indecency hearings. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that I didn't see the halftime show at the Super Bowl. I never missed a play in the football game, but uh, soon I, I noticed uh, who was sponsoring and who was putting on the, the halftime show, and I switched over to the poker tournament from, from Las Vegas. Um, and that was more exciting uh, that time. But nonetheless, uh, we, there was two of those hearings today, and I think that's where they are. Uh, we're delightful to have David Gross here, who's the ambassador uh, who bears the uh, massive responsibility of, of uh, uh, coordinating our policies with the rest of the world. And David, where are you? I know you're you're nearby. Stick your hand in the air and be ready. There you are, way back there. But uh, does a terrific job. And and um, and then the lady who does all the coordinating in our office. And uh, I was going to make her queen of the internet, and she said, No, I don't want to be that. Uh, but Margot Rushing, uh, my office manager down in our office, and she does all the legwork, all the footwork, and uh, and does a does a terrific job. You know, since 1996, the caucus has, has really grown and now up to 170 members. And, uh, and we feel that that's very, very important because this is the vehicle in which members of Congress and members of the Senate uh, understand what this business is all about and, and understand the issues that confront us every year. And, uh, and, and so with, with the help of, and not help, but of the leadership of Pat Leahy and, and uh, Congressman Boucher and Goodlatte over on the on the House side, we've been uh, we've been able to keep it together and and keep it uh, uh, and keep it focused on the issues into the, the, the that's going to be we're going to have to be confronted into the future. I, and I want to especially thank Jerry Berman. Jerry, uh, of course, you, you all know him, but Jerry is a spark plug behind this, and and Tim Lorden, who uh, just spend endless hours. That's right. Give him a little round of applause because it's. Um, they, uh, they do a, a great job in, in, in keeping us going. Also, a special thank you from, from uh, NTT, uh, Masa Yamashita from uh, Nippon Telephone, uh, who just crawled off of the airplane getting in here from Tokyo. Uh, 
Tommaso, where are you? And uh, he's probably over taking a snooze. But uh, Greg, good to see you. And uh, but all these folks, it, it just takes a lot of people coming together that that makes this thing uh, really go. Uh, VeriSign and iSafe. Um, I, I want you to get to know those folks because they're doing some great things with young people in schools. Uh, and as far as the internet goes, we know this is a great medium, but there's also some things on the internet that we think uh, shouldn't be there. But nonetheless, it is a democracy. And and uh, but. We had a, uh, an iSafe uh, get-together in, in, uh, in Billings, Montana. We brought in all the law enforcement people, the principals, and the school superintendents, and this type thing, and also formed peer groups in, in middle schools uh, where, where we have some of our problems with our young people. And I, I just want to applaud VeriSign and, and iSafe folks. Put, put your hand up over there. We're already way back there in the back, but they've done a terrific job. Um, there, you can put it down now, or you can go to the bathroom. I don't know which... <laughs> But give them a nice round of applause because they're addressing a, a problem and a, and a challenge uh, uh, that we have. And finally, ComCare, who has been working on the critical project that I have fully supported, and that's the Emergency Provider Access Directory, EPAD. And, uh, of course, they're on the cutting edge there that allow all agencies hooked up with broadband connections to use for emergency communications. And as you know, we, we still work for with systems that not only are are advanced uh, as far as their technology is concerned, but also interoperative systems that we can talk to one another. And, and I'll just give you a little uh, update on what's coming up. Uh, we probably have the most ambitious briefing schedule ever this year, which includes many critical policy issues, international dialogue events with the emphasis on Asia. Uh, will be, be one of those. Also, if I get around to it, I got a fantastic memory, but it's short. Uh, Senator Wyden and I are working on spyware legislation. And of course, uh, ICANN continues to be an issue that has to be addressed, and we're working with, with the ICANN uh, folks, also with voice over uh, IP. Uh, we're talking about universal service and many issues there that, um, that uh, have an impact on us, and of course, the wireless, tax, uh, the wireless task force events, and that's Representative Dunn and Representative Honda continue to do a great job in that task force and plan events with wireless privacy and, of course, spectrum reform. Uh, that's all very, very important to this caucus and to the industry that we, we try to represent and, and try to keep alive uh, for the, just to keep members abreast of the issues that we're facing, and I don't know whose that was. But uh, I just want to introduce Pat Leahy. Pat has been a, just a stalwart. He was one of the early Internet, internet users. Uh, he had to teach this old country boy how to do it. But, um, but how to use all these things. But uh, Pat, I think you'll have to agree with me. Um, we've made great strides in more technologies and more ways to, to talk to one another, to show one another, and to communicate with the rest of the world. And I, and I just appreciate your leadership on this. Pat Leahy from Vermont. Thank you. Thanks, Conrad. <laughs> you know, Conrad's being too modest. It doesn't take him very long to learn anything. Uh, we did have some members, still do, we think the computer that's given to them in their office, standard equipment, is a TV set they can't quite turn on. <laughs> I've offered to come over and show them how you can do that. I mean, you can still run your television through it if you want. I uh, uh, I don't know if Congressman Boucher was at the decency hearing or not, but I, I always find these kind of things interesting. You know, when you talk about the Super Bowl, I know you were, um, the, for one thing, Virtually nobody was watching that actually saw what happened. It was over so so quickly. There's only two groups of people that know what happened. One, where the people would watch any kind of network news for the next three days as they go on over and over and over again and say, we are so shocked. Can you believe this? Gosh, I can't show that again. Oh, I'm shocked too. <laughs> Bring Jim in from the control room. Jim, take a look at this. Are you shocked? I'm shocked. And of course the others, the others have set an all-time record on Google. <laughs> they were really shocked. If I could be serious for a moment, actually, this is what I found from a personal point of view, not something that I actually missed because I was reaching for the popcorn in that uh, nanosecond. But what it shocked me and really perturbed me, I'm not suggesting legislation on either, but Kid Rock taking the American flag cutting a hole in it for a poncho, prancing around as though it's some piece of 
ordinary cloth and then throwing it out, I guess, on either onto the ground or elsewhere. Now that hasn't been talked about by the FCC members who want to get before the press or, or members of Congress who can't wait to get a press release out. That's actually where our men and women over dying in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's what they should have been shocked about. I was. Now, a serious thing. Jerry, you do a great job as chairman. You've always done a great job. One of the things when Conrad and I talk about actually having a caucus where people show up, Jerry, you deserve so much of the credit for that and the Internet Education Foundation because you make it new every year as the Internet is. You make it exciting every year as the technology is. And everybody here shows that. And the fact that the members of Congress, Democrats, Republicans, Independents, as Conrad said, we've joined together, 170 of us. And you can't pigeonhole, I it's safe to say, you can't pigeonhole the political philosophy of those 170. We're all across the, uh, the spectrum, as is the, as is the Internet. And then the support, we get 200 organizations and the caucus advisory board. Uh, we show that we show this goes beyond a partisan or political party issue. It's all of us. It's all of us together. But it's also important that we look at what's going on. It, it creates new markets. At the same time, it threatens old markets. It facilitates the protection of certain civil liberties but then it gives new and powerful tools to those who would strike at our civil liberties. Conrad and I have worked on a whole lot of issues, including increasing the availability of broadband access to rural areas like those in Montana and Vermont, and rural areas in actually almost all states. It's almost like back in the days of Franklin Roosevelt when electric lights and uh, telephone came into rural areas and brought them in as part of America Today, you have to have broadband to do the same thing. We've worked with the House to provide a federal loan guarantee program as an incentive for industry to offer local to local television and high speed internet into rural areas. Senator Burns and I worked hard last year to ensure that tough criminal penalties were added to the CAN SPAM Act. The law has not been immediately effective in, re in reducing spam. But this isn't surprising. It could take months to trace an illegal operating spammer. And they often are not here in the United States. They're abroad. So to aid in these efforts, last week the President requested $8.5 million for the FTC to support enforcement of the new law. Senator Wyden and Senator Allen are going to work together to keep uh, electronic commerce free from discriminatory and multiple taxes. We have voice over IP being demoed here today. Low-cost voice communications, powerful new services, but it challenges the existing balances of universal service access fees and law enforcement, legitimate law enforcement needs. So we have to be looking at that. There are so many issues we could spend all evening talking about, but you're, the reason for this is for you to be here and talk about it and pass on your ideas. We actually do read our emails. We actually do read the ideas that come to us. So please continue to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Congressman Bausch, you know, we, we went back, we went back to the time when we actually began this, and it was uh, just a small handful of us uh, with Jerry Berman in doing that. Uh, the congressman and I were two of the original ones, and we made it very clear, and he, he made it very clear, this is not going to be a Republican or Democratic issue. This is going to be a Congress-wide issue, an American people issue, and he is one person who has stuck to that all the years. So it's all yours, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Senator Leahy, for that introduction. It's a privilege tonight for me to join with the other co-chairs of the Congressional Internet Caucus, Senator Leahy, Senator Burns, my House colleague, uh, Congressman Bob Goodlatte, and welcoming everyone here. I, too, want to say some kind words about Jerry Berman and about Tim Lorton and the wonderful job that they do in supporting the work of the Congressional Internet Caucus. 
The external advisory committee, whose activities they coordinate, helped to sponsor this annual reception, which I do believe attracts more attendance every year. I think we have a record attendance this year. They also helped to sponsor the almost weekly forums that we have on a variety of internet-specific issues throughout the course of the congressional session. We depend upon that external advisory committee to help carry forward the work of the Internet Caucus. And tonight I want to say thank you to the people who truly make that possible. And please join with me, if you would, in expressing our appreciation to both Jerry Berman and to Tim Lorton and to their fine staff. And while they are, in fact, still testifying in one uh, house or the other, uh, I tonight also want to commend the members of the Federal Communications Commission, and in particular, Chairman Powell, who has shown a great interest in the subject, for the work that they have done in helping to advance the cause of the expansion of telemedicine services across the United States, the new order that was approved by the Commission about three months ago is literally going to make telemedicine service possible in thousands of clinics and hospitals around the country that in the absence of this order could not afford the telemedicine link, that vital communications link that connects a clinic or a hospital to a teaching center. Uh, because of what the Commission has done, we will rapidly see a broad expansion of telemedicine. Tonight I also want to call attention to one of the attendees here, and that is the person who I think is the foremost advocate for telemedicine around the entire nation. And that is Dr. Karen Ruban at the University of Virginia's Hospital in Charlottesville. Please give her a hand, and she's here with us tonight. I think she is. Uh, both of my Senate colleagues are saying, where is she? Uh, Karen, if you're here, would you raise your hand? Well, she told me on her email today that she was going to be here. Right there. Yeah, there you go. So she is here. And, and Karen, thank you very much for everything that you do. We have an exciting year ahead of us. We uh, are, as uh, both uh, Conrad and Pat indicated, uh, preparing to talk about issues relating to voice over IP and the extent to which access charges uh, should apply, the extent to which voice IP should contribute to sustaining universal service funding. We also are preparing to begin a very important conversation this year about what will be a major rewrite of the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Believe it or not, it's been almost 10 years since that law was passed. And I, for one, think some major revisions are necessary and the dialogue should begin sooner rather than later about doing that. As we undertake this very important work, we look to you for good advice and good recommendations and I hope that you'll share your creative thinking with us. As uh, Pat indicated, we do listen, and we very much want to hear from you. Thank you to all of those who are exhibiting tonight, and thanks to each of you for attending and making this annual uh, reception the success that it is. Thank you very much. I, I, I want to thank everyone in the audience as we close. This is, you've been, uh, more patient in this year with our than ever before, and we appreciate that. Uh, I also want to uh, recognize that John uh, uh, of the Patent and Trademark Offices. He's gone. Um, I'm reminded that we have one more thing on our program. Uh, Will, yes. Will, is Ambassador Gross still in, with us? David? Is David still here? David, are you still here? Yeah. David, we, we'd like to hear a few words from you because the, we, it is a global internet and, you're, and you are our, our ambassador to the rest of the world. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I just want to thank everyone else for, uh, for attending this. Uh, what is done by the caucus is extraordinarily important obviously not only uh, for the services to, uh, to Congress, but for those of us who are working in the international sector, we use those resources very vigorously to advocate U.S. interests in this area. And with that, I would like to just thank Jerry and thank his team very much for all his help. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Okay. 
as you as you go about the room, uh, we are also listing our supporters. Without our supporters, the people who help us uh, put this on uh, with the advisory committee, uh, we really need them. They're recognized. We have them flashing their names, flashing on both sides of the building. They're they are on our literature. Uh, they're in a special pullout in our in our brochure. And they can also be recognized by the scribbled uh, uh, name tags because we made special name tags for our supporters and board and they got lost in a, in a cab on the way over here. It was a, a glitch, but so the scribbled people are the really important people here. Thank you very much and we thank you all.